Hello, you are probably familiar with the ever familiar ohm symbol. So we're going to be talking about this a lot. The first thing to talk about is that the ohm is not just a pretty symbol to look at and meditate upon, though that can be a nice thing too. There are actually four major levels of the ohm symbol. Uh, one of them is this dot that is up here, and this squiggly thing here that looks a little bit like the number three. Notice that it has two, three parts. So it has this part, it has a chunk in the middle, and it has a tail on the bottom. So there are one, two, three, four major parts of the symbol. Here's another way, you'll, you'll, we'll use this a few more times. Here's another way that we can look at this symbol. Can you see this okay? Alrighty. And so you'll notice that, that on this little picture, there are one, two, three vertical dotted lines. That divides this symbol into one, two, three, four major parts. Here's another way of counting the four major parts, is simply to count fingers, and that there are one, two, three, four fingers. First of all, we're talking about these four parts, the four parts that are on here, the four parts that are symbolized here, and the four fingers. Later on, we will talk about seven levels of consciousness. As an introduction to that, here's the principle. There are one, two, three, four major parts. But notice that between the fingers, there's a space. So there are one, two, three transition levels in there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. And that's what we will talk about in some more detail about each of those seven levels. But it basically outlines into four major levels that, again, I know I'm being repetitive, but I'm just trying to make the point for you, that are in this symbol where there's one, two, three, four major parts, and that card symbol, and the fingers. One of the ways of describing those four level levels is something that we are all familiar with. We are all already familiar this, with this because we live it constantly. You and I are right now in the waking state of mind. You're not laying in bed sleeping. You're not laying in bed dreaming. You're not sitting there daydreaming about something else. Your conscious mind is right there. You're in the waking state of consciousness. I'm in the waking state of consciousness. That's one of those levels. If we were to droop our head down or lay down to take a little nap, we might start daydreaming or we might start to fall asleep and have a sleeping dream. That's another level of consciousness. So one is waking and the other is dreaming. And if we really fell off into deep sleep, there would be no dreams, there would be no pictures, there would be no words, there would be no daydreaming or sleeping dreaming going on. There would be only pure deep sleep. But yet notice what happens after a deep sleep. Your friend says to you, how did you sleep? And you say, I slept very well. I slept like a log. How do you know? How do you know that you were in deep sleep? Because some part of you was awake. So paradoxically, even in deep sleep, there is consciousness. And we all know this already. And that fourth state, that fourth one, which is the dot up here on this, and which is this little symbol over here, which we have a question mark, because it doesn't matter what name you call it. In yogic language, it's usually called capital S self, or soul, or atman, or purusha, different names. We just put a question mark here, because in some sense, it doesn't matter what you call it. It basically means that consciousness which is there and which is alive right now in the waking state. There is consciousness, there is awareness. When you're having a dream, there is awareness, there is consciousness. It's the same consciousness, but it's just operating at a different level. And when you're in deep sleep, there is still consciousness, although you are not aware of it. We know about it later because we remember that we slept well. So there is the one, two, three, four. Now in terms of fingers, I don't care if you count it this way or this way. I'm happy to count it waking, dreaming, deep sleep, 
and the fourth state. You can, you can count it the other way, if you, it doesn't matter, they're just fingers. Anyway, it's just a playful way of describing that there are four levels of consciousness, and then when you count the transition levels, you see there's those three do vertical dotted lines, those are the same as the space between my fingers, okay? And so then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels of consciousness, and each one of those has a name, and we will talk about it. There's another principle here that's very important to understand. In our common language, we use a word to represent a thing. If I use, get ready for this, if I use the mantra, apple, that's in English language. In other languages, I don't know other languages, so I don't know what other words are, but in other languages, there are different words. But if I say the, the mantra, apple, I've done this with groups of people, 15, 20 people in a room. I say, would everybody please think of an apple? And everybody will think of an apple. I'll say, okay, everybody got an apple? Uh, show me your hand, show of hands, and all 15, 20 people will stick their hand up. Yes, I have an apple. Okay, what, kind, what color apple did you think of? And the most common response is red, but some of the people will say, I thought of a green apple. Some of the people will say, I thought of a yellow apple. I'll say, did your apple have a little leaf and a stem on it, or did it not? Some people will say it did, some people will say it did not. Did you think of a big apple, or a medium apple, or a small apple? And they all have a different answer, but it's still an apple. So something is being communicated there. The, the mantra, if you will, apple, is referring to a reality. And, and yet there's an essence. In a small red apple, there's an essence of apple nest. In a large green apple, there is the essence of apple nest. And just to make sure you got the point, here is an apple. This is, I guess, probably a medium-sized apple. It doesn't have a leaf. It has a little bitty stem there. But the point being that the mantra apple refers to something. The mantra om refers to something. And it's not j my apple's about to fall down. The, the, the mantra om does not just refer refer to this pretty brass symbol. The symbol refers, if I wrote down A-P-P-L-E, that symbol of A-P-P-L-E refers to objects like this, the essence of which big green ones are apple and this little medium sized sort of, this is a sort of red and yellow one, it refers to apple. So there's different kinds of apple, but they're, but they're all apple nests. So, when I think, if I ask you to think of your best friend, everybody's going to think of a different person. Everybody thinks of a human being, unless your best friend's a cat or a dog, and that's okay too. But we all think of somebody. But there is, if you all thought of a human being, then there is human being nest that's in common. With OM, I used the phrase earlier about waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and this fourth state, which is consciousness. Everybody has a different thing going on just in daily life. In daily life, we're all using our waking state mind. We're using our waking state mind right now. As we're having this conversation, I'm in the waking state. You're in the waking state. You're paying attention to me right now. I'm, I'm trying to talk to you. So, but we may be thinking of different things. We're in a different environment. You're sitting there looking at your computer or your cell phone or something like that. I'm sitting here looking at the lens of a camera so that I can talk to you. We're having a slightly different or maybe a significantly different life experience in the waking state. But the waking state of consciousness is what's being referred to by this part out here. It's what's being referred to by this symbol down here or depending on which way I count one of these fingers. And it is the A sound of OM. In OM, if I say, sometimes people will say like, OM, I'm going to be very impressive, I'm going to go, OM. If I say it like that, it makes the sounds very clear because at the beginning there is an uh. There is an uh sound. You cannot go do the middle one without the first. You can't go ooh, without the first breaking forth of the, of the vocal cords making the sound. So it has to start with ah. 
and in the middle is ooh, and then when the lips close, it turns into mmm. And even if you do it only silently in your mind, those three parts are still there. There still is a beginning. There's the mmm sound in the middle, and there's the, uh, there's the ooh sound in the middle, and there's an mmm at the end. And so we are all doing that. We're all in the waking state, but we're having vastly different experiences of the waking state. And if your head nods off while I'm jabbering and my head nods off while I'm talking to you and we start having a little daydream or a sleeping dream, we may have different dreams. We may go to a beach or an ocean. We're hanging out with different people doing different activities. But the state or the level or the plane of reality that we are in is the same plane of reality, same level of consciousness. If we fall into deep sleep, I fall into deep sleep, you go into deep sleep, what happens to all your dream characters? They disappear, they fall away. What happens to your cognitive senses of smelling, tasting, seeing, touching, and hearing? They fall away because now you are in deep sleep. You're not using your senses out here in the world, and you're also not experiencing dream objects like this. You can watch a dog have a dream. You know, the, you know, the, the, the body parts and the eyes are sitting there moving. You can see a dog having it. You can watch a human. They fall asleep, and you see a person having a dream, and all of a sudden, they're going to go into deep sleep. Everything stops. And you can see the person just went into deep sleep. So we all have deep sleep. And at the level of deep sleep, that level of consciousness, we do deep sleep in the plane of reality called deep sleep. We're doing waking, dreaming, and deep sleep at levels of consciousness. Now there we start to become more uniform because in my deep sleep I'm not thinking of any objects or pictures or words and in your deep sleep we're not thinking of any pictures or words or characters or anything. All of those have receded inward. The mind that we are using out here in the waking state has receded. The mind for dreaming recedes inward. It's not using these eyeballs out here and these ears out here, but in the dream we are seeing and we are hearing and we're smelling and we're tasting and we're touching. We're using our cognitive senses in the dream, but only with the dream objects. And you have different objects in your dream than I do in my dream. Maybe some things in common, but we're having different characters. So there is waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And this fourth state that is literally called the fourth state, the fancy word of that is Turiya which literally means fourth. So one, two, three, fourth. It's the fourth state, and it's the state of pure consciousness. And note again that the consciousness operates in deep sleep, the consciousness operates in dreaming, and the consciousness operates in the waking state. So right now, you're using your conscious mind. I'm using my conscious mind. But the only way that we can have a conversation is if your unconscious, your active unconscious mind, which is that middle ground, that's this part in here, this chunk in the middle, if that is processing, it's a little bit like, it's not perfectly so, but it's a little bit like the microprocessor in your computer or your cell phone. It's what I like to playfully call doing the thinking. It's the, it's the microprocessor. And, and we're not usually aware of that in day-to-day -day life, but, but we all know that it's there. I'm communicating, I'm using English language, I'm using hands to gesture and, the, and like this. This is the waking state and using the conscious mind. The active unconscious we can infer is processing right now. If all of a sudden you and I each all of a sudden remember something on our to-do list that we forgot to do before we came together to do this, all of a sudden that pops into your mind from where did it come? It came from that third level which is called the latent unconscious. If I were to ask you what's your phone number, until I ask you, you were not thinking about it. But all of a sudden it comes forward from the latent unconscious through the active unconscious microprocessor, microchip, and it comes into your conscious mind and it comes out your mouth and you speak your telephone number and I hear it and I write it down or I type it into my phone so I now have your phone number. So we have those three levels going on right now. We have conscious processing, we have active unconscious processing, 
and we have latent unconscious which is the storage bank of our memories. It's the storage bank also of our samskaras, our deep impressions that are the driving force behind karma. We've all heard of karma, the stuff that I do out here in the world and then we often talk about whether we have good karma or bad karma or whatever, but the karma, the actions that I do out here in the world with my levels of mind out through my body out here happens because of the latent stuff back here. I can speak to you right now because I'm drawing upon my latent information about this subject and my latent ability to operate my tongue and my lips and my vocal cords. That's called speaking and I have some latent memory, not perfectly so. I have a little bit of latent memory about English. If I had to start speaking to you in Dutch, for example, I'd be in big trouble. I don't have that in my latent unconscious. Others do. So there's waking, dreaming, and deep sleep in which we are using our conscious mind, our active unconscious, and our latent unconscious, and all of those are being driven by consciousness itself. Here's another metaphor. I don't have a machine to show you. I have a clicker here that Let's pretend that this little clicker here is my cell phone and I'm talking to you. How does the cell phone operate on electricity? So whatever the phone does, what, what, as it operates its app or its program or whatever you call it like that, it requires electricity. So this stuff back here, the awareness or the consciousness itself is a little bit like electricity and it operates outward through the latent unconscious which stirs the active unconscious which makes our conscious mind operate that then operates out through our physical body and central nervous system and brain and so that we can do stuff out in the world. I can move around and I can speak to you and I can hear and I can see and I can smell and I can taste and I can touch. Anyway, that's a little introduction to the, to the four levels of consciousness that are all mapped out by OM. Ultimately what we want to be able to do is practice observing those functionings, all of them, right in the middle of daily life, sometimes called meditation in action or contemplation in action or sometimes called mindfulness. And at the time of meditation what we're trying to do is recede inward from here, through here, through here, and ultimately to the awareness of this standing alone and this is called capital S self or Atman or Purusha hence is called self-realization. So Om is a journey inward through these levels of consciousness to be aware of this. Anyway, this presentation right now is intended just as an introduction to those levels of consciousness and remember that the Om just like the word Apple actually refers to something what does it refer to? A totality. It is the totality of me. It is the totality of you. It is the totality of the entire universe. It's the physical universe. It's the subtle psychic astral plane or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's the, it includes what is sometimes called the causal plane of reality. There's a fancy Sanskrit word for that. We'll talk about that in a, in a later talk and go through all of those seven levels. And then there is that fourth state which again is this little dot here or is this or is you count. It's either this finger or this finger depending on whether you count one, two, three, four or one, two, three, four. Doesn't matter. Count the direction you want. Anyway, so this is an introduction to those four levels of consciousness. Very, very important. This is beginning level, but here's a surprise for you. The advanced level with OM is philosophically, theoretically, precisely the same as the beginning level. The only thing different is that you become more and more expert at dealing with it and knowing what it means and following it back to where it came from from the ah to the u to the m mm, and back to the silence after the om. Okay, to be continued. Okay, I hope you're having fun with this. It's going to be quite a journey. Bye-bye.